we had this hipster storyboard and we have several stories on our page. Each page has about 10 stories and you'll see navigating through each one it takes about a second to load. So today we're going to look at being able to cache these or fragment caching each one of the story partials that we're loading so that the page will load much much faster. On line 16 of the partial that we're rendering for each story, you'll notice that we're calling a 0.1 second sleep. This is just to illustrate the purpose of a long running partial that has several calculations in there that may take a bit of time to load. And we'll keep this in for the duration of this project just so we can see how much faster our site loads once we're caching the heavy partials. Have a look at episode 18 where I discuss Dolly a gem for interfacing with memcache through Ruby. And in your development environment, make sure that you set up your cache stored to the Dolly store, and then your action controller perform caching you set to true. It is false by default in your development environment. And then back in our partial, we can then wrap it in a cache do. And this will perform the caching for each partial. If you come back to our application, you can now see that the pages load much faster. However, now we have an issue where all the stories are the same. So what we need to do is we need to create some kind of key on our story partial so that each one would be identified as different. If you look in the application log, you'll see that it is reading the cache. However, it's just reading stories. There is no identifier between each one of the stories that we're caching. And this is just a random digest that's added afterwards that's then part of the key. Back in our partial, we can pass our story into this cache and this will allow it to cache each individual story. Coming back to our application, if we were to refresh, you'll now see that we have all of our stories back. And if we scroll through each page, the first time it loads, it'll take it a second still to load, but then as you come back, you'll see that it's going much, much faster. And if you look in the log now, we are still caching under the stories, but it's also added to the key, the ID of the story, as well as the timestamp. And the timestamp is actually very important because if we ever make an update to a story, then it's going to auto expire the story cache and it'll rebuild it the next time it gets hit. Let's take our performance a little bit further and also cache our tags. The problem that we're going to have is the tag we're using the act as taggable on gem. So it's just a string and we have our tag list. So if we add our test, change this to test one and update our story, you'll see that we now have the test one tag. The problem that we're going to run into is it won't actually automatically update our list here and it won't update the counter that we have. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a callback that's going to update the tags. Now you'll see that we have several tags in our story and we wouldn't want to expire each one of these individually but just the ones that have changed. So we would need to expire the old tag so it would update the old record and then it would also update the new tag and add that in as well. So in our example for the first record here we're going to remove this tag and instead we're going to replace it with this Meggings tag. And we should hopefully see this drop from 16 to 15 and increase from 17 to 18. So back in our index, let's go ahead and add the tags for the most cached. So you'll notice here that the cache that we're doing, we are passing in an array for the actual key name. I'm calling tag, and then I'm calling the name of the tag then also skip digest true. And we want to skip the digest because we won't know what's generated when we're going to expire that fragment or that cache. So we need something that we can rely on that's going to be unique. So that's why we're adding in this tag here and then we're passing in the name. So back in our application log, you'll see now where it's calling the read on the fragments after we refresh the page a few times, and it's calling the key view tags and then the name of the tag. Notice it does not have the digest at the end like we saw with our story partials. The first thing I like to do is create a expire fragments method and have that under the action record base. So in my config initializers, I just have this in here 
which it'll basically just call the action controller base.new expire fragments and pass in the arguments. We do this because expire fragment is not something that's available in the model, but it is something that's available in the controller. We want to find out what was changed and what it was changed to, so we can then expire just those individual tags. That's why we need to get the expire fragment in our model. And then in our model, we can call a before update, and then we can create a private method called expire change tags. You can name this whatever you want, and we only want to do this if the tag list was changed. So our private method will look something like this, where we're just storing the original tag list. We're calling tag list change, which is going to pass in a nested array. One array is the original values, and the second array is what the new values are. So we have these two arrays that we can then just find out just subtracting the old from the new and union that with the new and the old to get the list of tags that were changed, including the ones that the original ones and the new ones. And then we can loop through this new array and then just expire them. Notice I did not call in views and then the tag. It'll automatically do that. So we want to just call tag and then our name like we had it set in our index. So now if we edit our tags, we just put in our new one update our story. We now see that Megan's is at 18. The other one is dropped down to 15. You also may want to check out the fragment caching section on the Ruby on Rails guides. They do have some good information and it's definitely worth a read. Well that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching.